we have our differential Maxwell's equation in SI form. Two of them with source term, two without source. And two fields expressed in terms of scalar potential phi and vector potential A. As we have seen that Maxwell's equations are not invariant under Galilean coordinate transformation. But it's a physical law, so it must be independent of the reference frame. So the entire goal of this video will be searching for a transformation under which Maxwell's four equations remain invariant. We will do the entire calculation using tensor algebra. So before going any further, let me introduce some notations that will be used in every calculation from now on. Introducing you with the four vectors, here we will treat CT as a coordinate as same footing of the position but in four vector space where C is the velocity of light in free space and T is the time of the frame where XYZ are three position coordinates defined. We will use 0, 1, 2, 3 as superscript of X to denote them and compact them using alpha of X as superscript. We will also use subscripts while dealing with negative terms but as you might have noticed CT is still positive. This is because of the flat metric tensor eta, but I will not discuss about it in this video. It's also a good time to introduce contravariance and covariance, which is nothing but the vectors defined by shorthand notations. Although both are defined as how they transform on a change in coordinate system, but we haven't introduced the transformation yet since we are looking for it. So contravariance will be your x with upper indices and covariance with lower indices. But it's not position coordinate, it's infinitesimal change of four position or better defined as four vectors. Our goal is now to compactify every term of Maxwell's equations starting with positive differentials or contravariance as del upper index alpha and covariant differentials as lower indices alpha. We will also be combining scalar and vector potentials to create four potential. But this time, negative potentials will be denoted as contravariant A with upper indices alpha and positive potential as covariant A with lower indices alpha. Using those two definitions, we will try to find an unified way of writing six components of electric and magnetic fields in terms of a single tensor with double indices, each indices running from 0 to 3, totaling 16 components. But the components must depend on each other, so to give 6 components only. Let us define if upper indices alpha beta as del alpha a beta minus del beta e alpha, such that if we interchange indices, if beta alpha becomes just the negative of del alpha a beta minus del beta a alpha or negative if alpha beta itself. So it is an anti-symmetric tensor. If we make beta equals alpha, it's just the if alpha alpha equals negative if alpha alpha or if alpha alpha equals zero, denoting a four diagonal elements as zero. And since if alpha beta equals negative beta alpha, it makes the tensor anti-symmetric, leaving 12 elements in pairs or six distinct components which will serve as dummies for our six field components. We will call if alpha beta as field tensors from now on. Our next job is to map field tensors with respective components. We start with if 0 i, where i runs from 1 to 3 making them components of 3D space. We will use the respective values as del 0 denotes 1 over c partial differentiation with respect to time, a0 denoting scalar potential phi over c. Their i counterparts denoting partial space derivative and negative vector potentials. Together, if 0i represents three electric fields over c, but we still have three components to be figured out, which we will do separately. We will go over the same process, but now with fij both running from 1 to 3. So if 1 to denotes negative z component of magnetic field, if 1, 3 denotes positive y component of magnetic field, 
if 2 3 being the negative x component of the magnetic field. Go ahead, make a screenshot of it and check the validity of the steps. As we have our 6 components ready, we can fill the rest of the components to create full matrix of upper indices f alpha beta. To proceed further, we still have to denote source terms of Maxwell's equations. So we will define them just the way we did for 4 position vectors as positive current terms with upper indices j alpha and negative current components with lower indices j alpha. We will first combine the Maxwell's equations with source terms. Take the first equation and expand divergence as 3 derivatives at the same time replacing mu0 epsilon 0 from the equation with 1 over c squared which will come in handy later. Finally, we substitute all covariant derivatives and combine to get del i if 0 i equals mu0 j0 where i runs from 1 to 3. Our next stop will be the fourth equation with the current density term. Now, I could have just used Carl B in terms of Levi Civita simple, but we will do it component wise. Let's do the x component first. We replace every term with their covariant, partial differential, and contravariant field tensor parts just like before, but notice that the pattern is not so obvious anymore. Every field tensor is accompanied by 1 as upper indices. But the other indices keep changing. To make the pattern complete, we introduce del1 f11 and we know that this does not affect our equation since f11 is 0. Now we notice that del has indices 0, 1, 2, 3 in 4 terms where f has a fixed index 1 and another index varying similarly as the covariant del operator. Both free index on the left and right side denoted it being the x component. If we do this for both y and z components, we will find our pattern as del i if i j equals mu 0 j j. We still have our previous equation del i if 0 i equals mu 0 j. We combine them so each index now runs from 0 to 3's. We will combine them to create del alpha if upper indices alpha beta equals mu 0 j beta as a 4 vector equation which will be our replacement for the first and fourth Maxwell's equations involving charge and current sources. We still have two Maxwell's equations to go involving no source term. We will proceed in the same way as we did before that is replacing every term by their covariant and field tensor counterparts. But the pattern here will be even less obvious. As you can see, divergence B gives del F upper index 2, 3 plus del 2 F upper index 3, 1 plus del 3 F upper index 1, 2 with no index position fixed but like rotating in a cyclic order. Now that's a job for Levi Civita symbol. We will look into that. We break our third Maxwell's equation which is the restatement of the Lange's law component wise, replacing with covariant differentials and contravariant field tensors, x component of the equation will give del lower index 0, f upper indices 2, 3 plus del lower index 3, f upper indices 0, 2 plus del lower index 2, f upper indices 0, 3 equals 0. y component will give similar results but with indices 0, 1, 3 and z component with indices 0, 1, 2. And we can combine all four equations using four dimensional Levi Civita symbol epsilon lower index alpha, upper index beta, lower index gamma, and delta. Now, upper index and lower indices in epsilon are for contracting indices with partial del and field tensors. Other than that, it's just our usual Levi Civita symbol. Half is to deal with the terms that will come pairwise. You can check the validity of these equations yourself which will be pretty straightforward. I am not going to derive that here, but I can say that free index alpha is responsible for creating four component equations and other indices will generate terms in a single equation. Now we have our four Maxwell's equations replaced by two contravariant differential equations and we are all set to start finding the transformations which will leave those two equations unchanged.
going from one frame to another frame results in a change in coordinate like x to x prime. For four vectors, this change is written as x prime upper index alpha equals lambda alpha beta x upper index beta, where beta is the contracting index. But we haven't described the transformation yet. Before doing so, let's define a little more. dx prime upper index alpha equals lambda alpha beta dx beta. So lambda alpha beta will be derivative of dx prime alpha with respect to dx beta, which will later be known as Lorentz transformation. We will also define inverse Lorentz transformation lambda beta gamma as a derivative of x coordinate with respect to x prime coordinate, but it looks exactly like another Lorentz transformation, except for the fact that they combine to form identity operation denoted by Kronecker delta alpha gamma. In order to define what Lorentz transformation is, we define the notion of length. Like in 3D space, space to interval dr squared equals dot product of dr vector with dr vector in 4D space time interval ds squared is denoted as 4 vector product of dx lower index mu, dx upper index mu. Since length is a scalar quantity which remains unchanged under coordinate transformation, dx squared can also be described as a covariant dx prime alpha contravariant dx prime alpha. We can write the transformed forms of x primes and using properties of Lorentz transformation, we can show that it indeed preserves 4 dimensional length or better interpreted as space time interval. With all the information in hand, we are now set to ask the question, how will Maxwell's equation behave under Lorentz transformation? Will they remain invariant? Because if they do, space time interval will be a real physical quantity and will lead to the path of special relativity. We will convert each of the covariant partial derivative, contravariant field tensors and four current density del prime lower index mu which is del del x prime upper index mu can be replaced as del del x upper index gamma using chain rule which will give transformations of x prime upper index gamma from x upper index mu which is nothing but gamma lambda mu. So covariant del prime mu equals lambda gamma mu covariant del gamma. For the contravariant field tensor f prime mu rho first expand them in terms of four vector differentials and then use transformation for both del and a's. We can take lambdas common which will give f prime mu rho equals lambda mu epsilon lambda rho theta f epsilon theta which is just the way two dimensional tensors transform with two lambdas. Now since four current density is just the four vector it will transform with a single lambda giving us j prime rho equals lambda rho zeta j zeta. Now we take our source Maxwell's equation in transformed frame of reference covariant del prime mu contravariant f prime mu rho equals mu zero contravariant j prime rho. Inserting their transformed forms in terms of unprimed coordinate we have lambda gamma mu del lower index gamma lambda mu epsilon lambda rho theta if upper indices epsilon theta equals mu zero lambda rho zeta j zeta. Notice that two lambdas has one indices mu in common. We can group them together to form Kronecker delta gamma epsilon, but we still have two lambdas on both sides. To contract them, let's multiply both sides with lambda xi rho, which will give us delta xi theta on the left side and delta xi zeta on the right side. Now let the delta on the right side be absorbed by the current density and deltas on the left side be absorbed by the field tensor to give del lower index epsilon if upper indices epsilon xi equals mu zero j upper index xi, which is nothing but the untransformed Maxwell's equations with source. Our last transformed equation will be second and third combined Maxwell's equation half epsilon lower index theta upper mu lower rho sigma del prime lower index mu f prime upper rho sigma equals zero. Transformations give us three lambdas which we can combine with Levis beta tensor which is nothing but a constant tensor with value either 0, 1 or minus 1 will not change and give us epsilon lower theta upper mu lower rho sigma lambda alpha mu lambda rho beta 
lambda sigma gamma equals epsilon lower theta upper alpha lower beta gamma. Now finally we have our equation as epsilon lower theta upper alpha beta gamma del lower alpha f upper beta gamma which is nothing but the untransformed Maxwell's form. And with this it is proved that Lorentz transformation defined in the space time keeps Maxwell's equations unchanged. So we no longer talk about time as a separate entity rather space time as a single entity which will later serve as a framework for special relativity.